Well, that's why sex is such a great arena for learning because yes. it's, it's one of the most difficult areas to get yes. right. If you can get it right in, in sexuality, it can, you, know, you can use the same kind of principles in so many other different areas, just relating to other people, relating to your children, you know, you, it just relating to life. Mm. It's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a little microcosm of what you experience in the macrocosm. That's what we do men's work. The first thing we do, and say I've got 150 guys in front of me in a room, the first thing you tell them is that the first thing you have to do in your life is get your sex life in order. At least it works, right? Because, and then we look at the guy say, because can any one of you in this room trust a brother who doesn't have his sex life in order? Because otherwise he's going to be obsessed with his sex life all the time. And the mm -hmm. fact that it's dysfunctional. So that's the first thing we do. We bring in tantric teachers to teach the guys what male sexuality is. That's the first thing they need to learn. If you're going to do spiritual work on what it means to be a man and finally finish the journey from boy to man and become a fully grown up man, the first thing you need to work on is your sexuality. Yeah, because a lot of, a lot of people say, oh, but my relationship you know, is more important than just the sex. But if you look at things like the McKinsey, McKinsey studies, yeah. he was showing that you know, the foundation of a, of a good relationship, if you have a good sex life, it eat, makes it easier to deal with all the emotional turmoil and difficulties the bit difficulty of being in a relationship. Yeah. So sex does seem to be quite. And you can turn around. around. If you've got a bad sex life, you're going to compensate for that in absolutely everything else you do right. in the relationship. So yeah. sexuality is central. This though creates a problem. It's that in our society we're so used to getting a solution to a problem and getting it instantly. Like we think we can go online and get some expert out there to just advise us on something, and immediately we have the solution to a problem we're addressing. But the thing that with sexuality is precisely because it's in the body right. and the mind at the same time. Right. It's sex in the body and sexuality in the mind. But because it's so prevalent and so present there, and because it is the motor behind everything else we do as human beings. When we say libido, so we say libido here, the, you know, libido is that within you that when you wake up in the morning it wants to live. Right. That's within you that wants to have a cup of coffee and get started and getting things done and enjoying life. Right? Yeah. That's libido. And libido is fundamentally sexual according to Freud. And I firmly believe that's the case. Yeah. But this also means that this mindfulness is an enormous force that, that's the bottom of everything else going on. It's never harmonious and it's never easy. Mm. And, and the problem I think both you and I be confronted with when we be controversial in our work is that people come to us, they, they hear the message that we say sexuality and sex are incredibly important, can hardly be overrated. If you focus on them and get them right, you will get most other things in your life, right? Certainly your priorities. Mm. So, but they also come to us with the belief, the false belief they have just about everything else, that this is just a problem to be solved. And once the problem is solved, then you know what sex is like. You don't have to learn anything the rest of life. You can just practice it and enjoy it, right? Mm -hmm. And that, I think, is a big mistake because you and I never said that. No, we never no. ever promised people that sexuality would be easy no. or that it would be harmonious, that it would be balanced. Rather the exact opposite. Yes. Haven't yes. Oh, exactly. And I, and I think, you know, sex is a, is a very good litmus test for how embodied you are. Yeah. You know, a lot of people think, oh, I'm so spiritual, I'm really deep. Well, you know, is it embodied? You know, it's not just, you know, being clear in your mind about certain things, you know, and I think, you know, you put your body against someone and within seconds they're going to know, you know, are you embodied? Because uh, I think spirituality, when it's embodied, is sexy. Mm. You know, you don't want to just date a walking head. You know, no. you want someone that's actually living it in their body. And, um, you know, I think perhaps you know, women's bodies are especially in tune to like a men's body in a heterosexual relationship. You can feel, is this guy walking the talk? You know, can he can yeah. feel him? Is he really embodied there rather than just, you know, thinking? We're actually, we're pretty, you know, we're born in with the capacity to just look at somebody and walk into the room and tell them whether it's sex or not. Right. And when we say somebody sex, at least when they're not just young, but actually, actually when they become of some age, yeah. and we still find them sexier than ever, is right. precisely because they have an embodied sense of mind and sexuality belonging together. Which gives, like them, a certain, thing, gives right? them a certain presence. Yeah. yeah. They don't need to prove anything. There's a certain natural confidence to that if you if you know that you know you're, you're embodied in your sexuality if that's not quite right there's always you know some kind of covering and compensating yeah. yes know. exactly so you can be harmonious or balanced in the sense that you figure out when I do men's work I always tell the guys you've got two dicks you've got one dick between your legs you know men are very rough and simple so you do rough and simple with the men so you've got one dick between your legs you've got another dick in your head 
and the light shop, okay? If you only have one of them, that's good news anyway, because then you can work from the one dick you believe in towards the other dick, meaning that if you walk around and you've got a bright mind and you're very mental and you talk about things and verbalize things and you can always entertain people in discussion, okay, but you don't really have self-confidence in your body, then we need to work your way down. I say, I call it work from under the throat. So you right. start the throat and then work your way down. So you get self-confidence in your entire system, your entire body, and you become embodied, right? Yeah. But you can also find the opposite. Now, I don't mind at all to have a guy walk into the room who, you know, is a working class guy, but he knows his sex, he gets laid, he's probably pretty good at it naturally. He, you know, for him, Tantra is more like, you know, it's just, it's just getting a little extra on everything that he already has, right? But he doesn't have the self-confidence, and you can tell the guy's bright, but nobody ever told him. He didn't go to school as much as he probably should have because nobody knew that he was smart when he was younger. And I can just look at the guy and say, you're going to be easy piece of shit to work with because you believe in your dick between your leg already. Great. Because then you believe in your body. That means you are embodied. All we need to do now is to work on your mental self-confidence and you can shine. Right. And it seems that the mental body is, is faster to change than the, the physical body. It is. It, you know, is. it takes much more time to get that all operating properly. And Absolutely. And that's, yeah. I think, is, it's also a result of modern society being sort of very mental in itself. So like we're so trained to think of who we are in terms of comparing ourselves to other, others when we because we have we're verbal all the time we are in dialogue all the time we communicate with other people all the time so we, we measure ourselves according to those instruments and we, we go to school at least the first 30 years of our lives right so, so but the thing is that when you go down into the body most people think it's about going to gym and they get a PT right and then work on the muscles which is again preparing yourself right. for the meat market, <laughs> instead right. of getting out there and being sexually attractive. Yeah. But you work on, in the gym and you spend hundreds of hours getting the muscles right and getting your body toned and getting the fat off your system and getting the right diet. And then finally you've done all those things and you're out there and you meet the partner who's actually attracted by you, you don't know what to do with it because you never trained yourself in the area of sex and sexuality, right. which right. is the real minefield and the real challenge. Yeah.